I was at death's door. Like, I was at death's door, and I guess, like, the good I saw in that was that I was going to be reunited with my mom. <laughs> Love you, Mom. On October 10th of 1998, my mom suffered a serious aneurysm, and it left her horribly mentally and physically disabled, and she suffered in a big way for her last five years. And to see her in that condition, it just cut right through his soul. I mean, it was awful. And that just messed me up. Like, uh, I mean, it still messes me up. I have this problem with my mom died. She cried for her last five years. I just want to make her pain never have happened. And I went on this berserk rampage trying to get a time machine. I destroyed my whole place. <laughs> Not enough gigs. It's useless. See this? Completely useless. I love you, Mom. And I did all this for you. The drugs and alcohol threatened his future. Certainly, he turned off people that were influential in sponsorships and programming. Steve has uh, had, had a couple of glasses of Chardonnay. Hey, I will tell you, bitch. Right. That was kind of scary. I mean, first of all, for Adam to have to fight a guest is, is a weird thing to start with. But then when he really, like, cut himself and then didn't even seem aware of the fact that blood was gushing out of his body. You know, it didn't seem like he was headed in, in a good direction. We'll get security. Yeah. We'll, we'll, uh... He uh, reached a point where he was evicted from sets and unable to complete stuff that he started. He was headed to a disaster. I just sit in my house just piling all the narcotics into my body that I possibly can. Namely ketamine, nitrous oxide, PCP, cocaine, you know. And I just get all kinds of results. So everybody from Jackass went to New York for the 24-hour takeover of the MTV studios. And it was like, all right, we're going to fight to stay awake for 24 hours. And like, I'd already been awake for 24 hours, and I stayed up for another 24 hours after they kicked me off the set. It's like popping bills, dude. I'm really good at it. <laughs> really hadn't seen or hung out with Steve-O in the three or four months leading up to the 24-hour takeover. That's when I was forced to deal with Steve-O in his current state. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, wor I'm, wor I'm working on uh, some rhymes, some rhymes. He was wrecked on a bunch of stuff. Get your pages in order, man. Let's get it. <laughs> oh, man, okay. Are you ready? Oh, no, 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 okay. I was worried about all of them, if you want to know the truth. I was worried about all of them, but when I saw Steve-O, I knew he was in rare form. It's not easy being a gangster rapper, especially when you're white. I think he ended up getting thrown out. Is that right? Thrown out? Wow. If you get thrown out of a jackass thing, that's bad. I'm OK, I'm OK, yeah. But I'm thrown out of my sweatshirt, though. I'm really OK, better than OK. All right. Yeah. I went up to him and said, Steve, man, I'm worried about you. This, is, this isn't like fun, festive party stuff. This is dark, you know, like me worried about you kind of stuff. If anybody tried to tell me like that I had a problem and I needed to get help, it would either make me furious or make me laugh or just make me tune out. But uh, nobody could tell me. I kind of got to the point, even after I'd realized the gravity of the problem, where I had to bite my tongue and suffer through it and hope for the best. What did it say in the Bible? Be good to thy neighbor. <laughs> That's all I'm trying to do, pal. All I'm trying to do. I had this neighbor who called the cops on me all the time because I was loud and disrespectful and my place was this nightmare. I mean, I wasn't an ideal neighbor to have ever, let alone when the downward spiral really kicked into high gear. I dare you to call the cops.